What's going on, everybody? I'm here to give you guys a review for Love of Hip Hop New York, Season 8, Episode 6, Puppy Love. Alright, <clears throat> so we got Rich and Self. Rich is pretty much running down his whole situation with NIEs, you know, the fact that she's married, she has kids. Uh, he asked if, uh, Self asked Rich if you've I guess talk to the husband. He's like, I don't owe him shit, but I haven't talked to Navarro. I ain't talked to Navarro, which in essence he is right. He doesn't know the the husband or anything, but yeah, yeah, that's 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 gonna be a problem <laughs> waiting to happen. A uh, little more on Remy. All I'm gonna say is Mo hat. I mean, Remy has her shop called Conceited, open it in North Carolina, Rally, North Carolina. That's all I'm gonna say about that. The only thing that I will give her is. I know a lot of people say, why that? Because she could have done it in New York, but her doing it in Raleigh, North Carolina, it's one of those where it's close to Army Base. So, I mean, hey, she can get some money from that. Yandy and Bianca, they meet on a bridge, which I'm trying to figure out, like, if this was a business meeting, why the fuck didn't y'all, you know, go to the office that, you know, you had the phone that wasn't plugged in. But I digress. Yandy brings up the whole brand situation, how you popped off. You don't know who the now mind you, I think Yandy was looking for her exit strategy anyway, but she made a good point. You don't know who the fuck was around when you blew up. So it's almost like you don't care about your brand, you're damaging my brand. And Bianca had a real serious moment pretty much saying that, you know, she really doesn't have any money. The money that she makes goes to student loan, goes to bills, which I think that that right there should have been her storyline. You know, her grind and how she's working to pay off her bills and student loans rather than sitting here scrapping with people. Because even with that Brit girl, you see she wasn't on this episode. And I'm done with all my reviews. I just got to record them. But Brie wasn't even on the next episode I'm going to review after this. So it is like you pretty much gave her a storyline. Pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Ew, the fuck it is. So Yandy pretty much I said that. You have made the decision for you and not pretty much your behavior. And that's that. And she uh, ends their uh, working relationship. And you have Bianca talking about uh, double standards because, you know, she didn't, she said uh, the male artist that she had in the past, but she pretty much is talking about Jim Jones and how he was doing reckless shit and she took it. But I think the difference was that he was still on and that's why she fucking took it because he was still on and popping at the time and also he was the reason that love and hip-hop new york happened and brought her ass on along so he helped give her a platform even though she was friends with mama so now we got rich and navarro so <clears throat> navarro saying ashley is not motivated and you know she wakes up late so he's already up she wakes up late this and i'm sorry let me kind of get thanks <laughs> That's that's my that's my life. I'm still trying to get the studio and shit, you know, put together. Don't judge me. Don't nudge me. Mm. And he says that she wanted this management company and he is still a lawyer. So he's having to sit here and juggle do a whole lot. And he's telling that to Rich. Now Rich wanted to talk tell him about being with Anais. And before he can get it out, Navarro Navarro pretty much is like, you know, uh he mentioned that his father had uh, passed out on the floor. Uh, his mother found him two hours later. <clears throat> um, and a lot, it was all because of diabetes that hits home with Ridge, because we all know he got the sugars. Move on, we got Jonathan and Anais. And because I've seen both episodes, again, I'm going to chop it up into two separate, two separate videos, two separate episodes. I'm not feeling Jonathan. I'm probably not. I'm not really. Pro I'm, I'm not feeling him. I'm not. It, it's It's something. It's something that he don't fuck shit. But anyway, uh, Anna, you said since she's since her marriage is on decline, she needs her best friend. He cries to say he feels that he put his career before her. Now, here's the thing. I got some friends. I do. I do. I do. Now, unless I've sat here and I've backstabbed a friend to sit here and breast my career, that's probably the only reason I'm going to apologize. But I'm not going to apologize for anybody for making moves because when the smoke clears, his thing, <clears throat> I came in this world by myself. I'm going to leave this world by myself. It's just that damn simple. So I'm not going to say and apologize to no motherfucker, whether it be friend or family, for the moves that I have to make unless I backstabbed you. 
other than that, I'm not going to apologize for any moves that I've made to sit here and progress in my career and ensure that my bottom line is taken care of. So, again, I think he's full of shit. He says he's dating a musician. He doesn't know how to deal with dating a musician and being second to the music. But when you have somebody that is dedicated to a career, <clears throat> whether it be a musician, a physician, anything like that, yeah, you're more than likely going to come second to the music. Now, he does say that, oh, boy, don't have enough time for, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get there. We got Jaquay <clears throat> and Bianca meet at his jerk chicken place, and he took, uh, um, I don't know if I don't know if he said his advance or his sign up or whatever that the company the record company gave him and start up his own joint, which I ain't I ain't mad at that because I mean let's be honest, being an artist that shit is not guaranteed and you make more money on the back on the behind the scenes than the front of the camera. So the fact that he took his money and, and invested in himself, man, I'm all for it. Go ahead, brother. And <clears throat> Bianca goes to tell him about the whole Sophia Ryland and James R thing, how his girl is intertwined and all of that. Because she don't know if anybody had brought it to her, which somebody did. But she, her whole thing is, hey, she's got to let him know. Sophia walks in. <clears throat> and, and, you know, he brings up the whole incident. And, you know, it's like, you know, you're doing videos, but you say you won't go do it. She said, well, I tried to call you like three times. You didn't pick up your phone. He was like, first of all, I know the fuck you didn't. Because had you done so, I would have seen it on my phone. One and two. You laying with me at night, so if you wanted to mention the shit, <clears throat> that was the time to do it. Again, she only that four fucking come up. She calls Mariah. She, as she explained the story, she said, and that scraggly little rat, Mariah Lynn, and Bianca's like, what, what you call her? And it got to the point where she was like, you know what? I'm going to take Andy's advice, even though I'm not working with her no more. And she held her mule, and eventually was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave, because I don't need to be around this shit. <clears throat> and pretty much Jaquay pretty much telling her like you need to deal with this fucking situation so then we got Rich and his mama they talk about you know diabetes health issues in that family how she needs for him to take care of himself for her and ultimately what she's saying is what a lot of parents feel is that they don't want to have to bury their child because that's not the natural order of things it's where the child has to bury the parent so it's going to hurt her to have to bury her fucking son. And she don't want that. And she even said that uh, his doctor, she's got it. He's not messing with her because she's married, but he's married, messing with a married woman. So, hmm. Uh, Jonathan and his boyfriend, Trent, they perform in the Lord's house. I'm just, I ain't got shit else to give it. I don't even, I don't even give a fuck about the fucking stuff. Like, why you? It wasn't no other fucking place y'all could perform but the church house. It'd be different if he was singing, you know, hallelujah. You know, um, the Lord is blessing me right now. Oh, right now, you know, wade in the water. But I can't do him. I can't do him. We're just going to move on. James and Sophia, <clears throat> he's trying to do damage control, especially because he knows that he and Mariah Land, they are done. He said that he tells Sophia that I have a thing for you. Okay, see, see my, see my, see my phone doing shit. Let's see that, see that, see that. That's that. anyway. <laughs> he's like, I have a thing for you, and he's trying to, you know, sewer went over, and some way somehow knew the type of motherfucker, you know, dog that the girl liked and shit. Got her the fucking dog, and you know she's floored. Yeah, that's about it. And then she brings the dog back to the apartment and she feels kind of weird because she's fucking nervous. Like, how the fuck she going to tell Jaquay? And Jaquay is like, oh, that's a nice pretty dog. You know where you get it from. Now, she's trying to be honest now, but yeah, you probably shouldn't have brought the fucking dog in. You probably shouldn't even just taken the fucking gift. <clears throat> but because, she, I think because she feels that she is Sophia the body or how Rich calls Sophia got bodies. I guess she feels that she can do whatever the fuck she want and get away with it. I, I would assume. I don't fucking know because I don't fuck with it. But he mad. And you know, he flips the fuck out. And I can't tell him motherfucker how the fuck to respond to shit like that because I don't know how the fuck I would respond. I, I can't really fucking tell you. 
I mean, I don't know if I would have been passive aggressive. I don't know if I would have called my cousin Clara, and I, I mean, I probably would have been like, "You got like fifteen minutes to get the fuck out," because uh, my cousin Clara on her way, and I'm pretty sure Clara gonna put her, you know put them paws on you. I don't know what the fuck I would have done. I don't know. But he's like, get your shit, get out. And she's trying to calm him down because she needs a fucking place to stay. And she was like, well, I'm going to come back in my furniture. And it was like she was trying to play him on camera. <clears throat> and I know some people feel a ways about like, oh, he ain't got no furniture. Come look, y'all. Mo most dudes, as long as we got a motherfucking place to lay out, as long as we got the fucking essentials. Like, even when I moved to my fucking apartment, I ain't have a couch off real. And shit, I ain't gonna fucking lie to you. I don't got a couch shit because I was having a fucking party. I want to make sure people had a motherfucking place to sit and whatnot. Other than that, I don't need no motherfucking couch and shit. <laughs> as long as the room that I sleep in is good and the kitchen, bedroom and kitchen is all the fuck I need to be good. Everything I don't give a fuck about. But I'm just being fucking honest. I'm just keeping 100 with you. <clears throat> and he was like, okay, mm, whatever. That was the episode. That's all I got. Break, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll be right back. Peace.